Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Crazy Buck from Complexity Limit and today we're going to show you how to kill the first boss in the Sanctum of Domination raid, the Terragru. This is a really cool concept of a fight from Blizzard and we think it's going to be quite a fun opening boss. You'll enter the raid into a floor of Torghast filled with all the standard things. Various small enemies, a few elites, lost souls to rescue for a small buff, and about 30 anima powers. The anima powers you collect will play an important role in the boss fight itself, as you'll retain those powers for the boss encounter. These are not class specific powers that you'll know from your own Torghast runs, but instead generalized ones meant to help your raid. There's some simple ones such as a leech buff, to kiss and curse ones like Ethereum Waves, which gives a 30% main stat buff but prevents you from being able to jump to some really wild powers. Two of our favorite anima powers from testing were Lumbering Form, which will double your character's size, give you a damage buff, and knock back any players you come in contact with, and the Ten of Towers, which gives you increased damage, reduced damage taken, but if you die, you'll explode and stun all players within 10 yards of you. The trolling possibilities of some of these anima powers are going to be absolutely incredible. The only anima power that you'll need to ensure people get is called the Ever Beating Heart, which will make a player immune to fear and stun effects. We recommend you ensure having at least two or three people in the raid take this specific anima power. In regards to the boss encounter itself, Tagru has two phases. Phase 1 lasts from the start of the fight until the boss reaches 10% and has a handful of mechanics to deal with. First off, the Tagru has a tank smash called Overpower that necessitates a tank swap. Next, the boss has a casted ability called Grasp of Death. This will put a nasty dot on a player for 40 seconds. Predator's Howl will put 5 yard circles around several random people, pulsing every 3 seconds. Anyone hit with a pulse is feared for 8 seconds. The Tagru will also periodically cast Fury of the Ages, which enrages itself, but this can easily be soothed or tranquilizing shotted off. Remnant of Forgotten Torments is actually three similar abilities that work roughly the same way. Each torment will put a soak circle on the ground somewhere with five charges. As long as any of these charges persist, they apply raid-wide effects. Soaking the circle reduces the charges and the potency of the raid-wide effects, and when the charges run out, the circle disappears. However, any player who soaks a charge from the circle will get a one and a half minute debuff related to the raid-wide effect. Upper Reach's Might will increase the raid's physical damage taken by 50%, Mortrigar's Echoes will increase the raid's magic damage taken by 50%, and Soul Forge Heat is a raid-wide dot that ticks for 10,000 fire damage to the entire raid every 3 seconds. Soaking a Circle basically converts one charge from a raid-wide effect to a single player debuff, creating a trade-off that you'll be able to min-max a little bit. As an example, soaking one charge of Mortrigar's Echoes applies a debuff to that player, increasing that specific player's magic damage taken by 10%, but reduces the raid-wide effect from 50% to 40% increased magic damage taken. You'll want to soak these circles generally as quickly as possible, having two people help soak each circle to spread out the 1.5 minute debuffs. This is especially important for the Soulforge Heat, as it can very quickly tick down the raid. When the boss casts Hungering Mist, it'll make several copies of itself around the room. Each copy will drop black mist around itself, covering most of the room. After a short time, the mist will explode, dealing massive damage to anybody still standing in the mist. Fortunately, there will be a small safe spot, an open area somewhere in the room that is not covered by the mist. The entire raid has to run to this safe spot. Anyone failing to stand in the safe spot will almost certainly die. After the mist explodes, the copies disappear, then a new set of copies reappear, and you repeat the process of having the entire raid run to the new safe spot. This ends up playing out like a dance. The whole raid moves together from safe spot to safe spot until the ability ends. The last major ability is Chains of Eternity, which will target a random person, then throw a massive chain at them a few seconds later. The chain will hit the first person it comes in contact with, dealing mild damage, stunning the person, and dragging them towards the boss. If they reach the boss, they die. Fortunately, the anima power that we mentioned earlier, that ever beating heart that makes players immune to stun, if you have one of those players soak the chain, they'll still take damage but they won't be stunned because they're immune, so they can just turn and run away with the chain and not get dragged into the boss. However, 
we strongly recommend not assigning this task to your more trollish raid members as sidestepping the chain at the very last second is a really easy way to intentionally kill someone. Just saying. The real fun of this fight is phase two, which starts at 10% health. Here, the Jailer's Gaze will activate, which removes all anima powers from the raid and causes the Tower Guru to start doing 500% increased damage. From this point on, the boss no longer uses any abilities and just chases you down to stomp you into the ground. Hope you have some mobile tanks who are pretty good at kiting because you've got to take out that last 10% health before everyone has just been decimated by a very angry Tower Guru. Your tanks should use whatever movement abilities they have and kite as long as possible. Eventually, the boss will probably reach your tanks and likely kill them very quickly. From that point, the boss is just going to chase down whoever has the highest threat, so just keep kiting him until you kill him. One last thing to note, Bloodlust Timing. We recommend using it at the very beginning of Phase 2, the first time you do this boss, and then as long as you feel it's necessary to safely get through Phase 2. However, as your group gets geared up more, Shifting the bloodlust to using on pool may end up being beneficial. Overall, as far as the fight's concerned, this is a pretty cool encounter for the first boss of a raid and has a lot of potential for your group to have a lot of fun. The anima powers will let you do wonky levels of damage and healing with ample opportunity to mess with your friends. The burn phase is chaotic as heck and feels like a race to the finish. Knock down this giant evil being and let's move on into the depths of the Sanctum of Domination. If you enjoyed this guide, remember to like it and make sure you're subscribed to the channel to catch all of our previews, guides, kill videos, and more. From the team here at Complexity Limit, have a great day and we'll see you next time.